Welcome to the People Leaders Podcast, the audio resource for managers and business leaders creating high-performing teams. Join leadership and team development experts Jan and Michelle Turkelson each week as they explore both subjects from every angle. Through practical tips, valuable insights, and compelling interviews with leadership experts around the world, you'll learn how to bring out the best in your staff and how to give your best as a leader. Hi Jan, let's jump straight in. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about psychological safety. So why are we talking about psychological safety today, Jan? Well, over the you know the last I suppose several months, mm. we have seen the importance of diversity and inclusion, especially for the senior leader level and also board level, of having a really good overview of it. And with diversity brings a whole array of different thinking styles, uh, different ways of approaching things, communicating. And I think it's really important to have a framework or a structure that allows people to be diverse, but also feel safe in a diverse situation. So some of the feedback we've been getting with our coaching clients is how do I create psychological safety? Because as a high-performing people leader, you want to create a climate of psychological safety. That's right. And so it's almost like it's the next iteration of the whole diversity debate in a way because mm. it's very obvious, yes, we need diversity in gender and age, etc. However, this thing called diversity in my thinking styles, my personality, how I gather information, how I process and communicate, you actually can't, it's not very obvious, is it? But mm. it's so integral to honouring the differences that people bring to a team. So yes, let's talk about psychological safety. Now, just a little bit of uh, uh, information here. Amy Edmondson was a Harvard Business School uh, professor and she did this TEDx talk and she actually coined the phrase psychological um, safety. And the way that she defined it was it's a team climate characterized by interpersonal trust and mutual respect in which people are comfortable being themselves. Who doesn't want that? Beautiful. Because when you asked me, my definition was, you know, the ability for people to speak openly and directly um, in a respectful way and not having fear of being judged or diminished. That's right. For being who they are. And and trust is such a big issue coming up all the time. And and I can only – I can – I can feel trust when I know I can be myself, which means, yes, I could make a mistake or do something stupid or make an error Mm. and still feel okay that I won't be pulled over the coals for it or reprimanded harshly or embarrassed or shamed. That's when I know that there'll be trust. And what they're finding is that high-performing teams – might make the same number of errors and and have the same issues, but they talk openly about their their um their errors or their um their failures. Yeah, and that's a good point. So you know, it's really important to have psychological safety because it's the foundation of a high performing team. It also encourages diversity of thinking, which also supports high levels of creativity and innovation. Mm. And it also allows an organisation or a team to manage red flags early. Yeah. You know, spot problems, but also be solution focused. Yeah. Bec- and why is that? Because we're talking all mm, the time mm. and it's about keeping the communication channels open. Focused, focused. Yeah. Focused conversation. All right. So what can we do about it? So as a people leader, I'm thinking it's almost like, okay, what can I do? And always start with yourself, I think. Mm. So what am I doing in order to create psychological safety for myself? Mm -hmm. So do am I creating an environment where I can feel safe? Now, one of those is am I asking for feedback Mm -hmm. about, you know, what I'm doing well, what I'm not doing well? Uh, Am I making myself available to my team uh, to create that environment? What else do I-, I have? Do I have a colleague or someone at work that I can actually download and speak openly, directly, and honestly to about certain situations, just to gauge where mm. um, someone would pick up 
on how I'm communicating some of the things that are coming up for me. And I think it's important for people leaders to remember that they will be a team member of some team, Mm. one team or another. Mm. So always remember, so what am I like and what do I need in in terms of me being a, a member of this leadership team? And then you can translate that into, okay, so I'm leading a team now. What is the environment that I am creating or that I have a big um, investment in creating the climate of? So what, you know, what, what are the things that I could be dialing up or dialing down? Great. Okay. So what can you do about it? Definitely start to ask questions. Now you can ask, ask questions of yourself, but also in your team meetings and individual team members. And these are some of the questions like, um, you know, this month, I want to us to have more of a a focus on uh, psychological safety. It's something that's really important to me. So give people the reason and the rationale around why you're actually having the conversations and why it's important. So I would start asking a few more questions about that in my team meetings or in my one-on-ones. And and always, the thing is, sometimes we will hear something back from our people that report to us and sometimes they're just going to give us what they think we want to hear. Mm. And so dig a little bit. Mm. It's okay to to dig a little bit under the surface. So tell me more about that. Um, oh, that's an that, interesting point of view. Mm, tell yeah, me more. Yeah, that's yeah. a great one. Uh, the other thing that you can do about to establish psychological safety is establish accountability. Mm. And for some managers, they most probably are already doing that as a people leader. However, do you really do you need to refocus the conversation on establishing clearer accountabilities? You know, how do we know that we're on track and off track? And if we were getting off track, as a team, how are we going to hold each other to account? Let's agree now so when we actually are in the thick of things, we have some type of guidance. Mm. So again, it's another conversation with a focus to it. Uh, Establish check-in. So at the beginning of every meeting or any team um, arrangement, can we just have a check-in around um, how people uh, a feeling or the energy levels. That's right. And I suppose what that does is that leads to the, one of those other, the bigger issue of, you know, people feeling included. Like this is my team as well. I'm not just a member of a team. Like this is my team and I'm invested in it. And so how do you do that in a team? It's, you know, it's not enough just to say, so how are we all feeling? It's actually as the people leader go around the table and ensure that everybody does have that opportunity to check in. It's not just the, you know, whoever, you the know, loudest. The That's yep. right. Another thing that you can do is um, have team agreements. And these are agreements around how we are going to behave as a team. Mm. So it could be that we're always going to be inclusive or we are going to speak to each other with respect. We're going to be open and direct. Um, there could be certain ways that people would phrase that in some teams that could sound different to other teams, but it is your team agreements. So these are established behaviours, the mm. way in which we are going to mm. You know, communicate with each other. And the other, the other thing to think about is how can I encourage people to experiment? And people say, you know, encourage failure. Well, there is that, but there's, it's more about people having a crack at yeah, something. I don't Just want to encourage you, failure. You're no, going to get exactly. failure. Let's encourage, I you know, know you being a little bit lot. more, uh, creative or innovative or thinking outside. So do <laughs> something a little bit different, like yeah. experiment. Yeah. And let's just call them mini, what are some of those mini experiments that we could, you know, that we could take on that we think might have a positive impact, but we do, we just don't know. That's why we're just going to call them an experiment and encourage that. And how do you encourage that? You have to put it on the table so for, as often as you so can. So, for example, a mini experiment could be um, the way in which I report to this stakeholder is this. Is there a way that we can report differently? Can I have a conversation with them to invite them? Are there different ways that you would like to have this information or the um, the level of conversation that we're having? Do you want it more? Uh, Do you want more visuals? So these are ways that you can experiment. That's right. Or... And it could be, you don't actually need to have a conversation with the stakeholder. It could be presenting your report in two different ways Mm. and just seeing seeing what they come back with. You don't necessarily always, yeah, have to have the conversation with the stakeholder. I think, um, yeah, experiment, have Mm. a go at something. So the other ways that you can encourage psychological safety is ask or offer support. So especially as a people leader, Mm. it's very empowering to actually um, admit that you don't know something, yeah. especially in a team environment. Um, so ask for support 
and offer support is one way. Another is admit your mistakes. Mm. And then because what that does, so why is, it, you know, but I'm the people leader. Shouldn't I, you know, be expected to lead the team and know everything? There, there is something, if we are really trying to create an environment where people can bring their whole selves and they only see you as being this superhuman, like that you are, you are their role model. Mm. So role model being human yeah. and being human means making mistakes sometimes. Yeah. And actually articulating that yeah. is powerful Mm. so for example um how i've seen it someone admitting their mistakes is that the way in which they um presented to the senior leaders um they presented in too much detail they really didn't get the key messages across and they said that to their team they said you know if i was to have my time again this is what i would have done differently so they're admitting their mistakes um reflective learning yeah that's great so that's one way that you can admit your mistakes uh the other thing is feedback so so ask for feedback and perhaps offer feedback, you know, create that culture of having those conversations. So there's some of the ways that you can establish and practice psychological safety. Now, if we were seeing this in a team or organisation, what would we be seeing, hearing, experiencing? Well, we'd be seeing teams talk about things just like that. Mm. Oh, this is where we didn't quite get it right last month, but that's okay. This is what we're going to do next month instead of like, oh, no, we won't talk about that. Let's move on. Yeah, (laughs) or asking dumb questions. Yes. Sorry, yeah. I might be the only person in the room, but I don't actually understand that connection there. Or and feeling okay, it's okay to challenge mm. the, um, you know, the agreed way of operating or the decision that everybody's made, but you don't quite agree with that. You know that there's psychological safety where you've got some dissonance in there and people are actually saying, no, I don't agree or I'm challenging that. And the other thing is that you will see conflict mm. and that you will see conflict being resolved or dealt with yep. rather than swept under the table or or people butting heads. You would see someone being congratulated for a difference of opinion. Yeah. Uh, you would see a people leader actually inviting everyone's input and setting it up that this is the way in which we operate. So especially if you have a combination of introverts and extroverts, you know, that the people leader would say, look, I really would like everyone's opinion on this particular topic. I, I'm just actually, let's have about a minute of silence just to reflect, maybe write some notes, and then I'm going to go around the table asking for input. So what you're doing is you are accommodating different styles and you are trying to seek people's opinion in the best way possible. Mm-hmm. And you know that you've um, you've achieved that where as a people leader you can almost step back mm. and then you just see it happening mm. around mm. you, mm. isn't that? And then um, and then you can start um, experimenting as a team member of a people leadership. That's when you, you stepping know, up, yes, yeah, sl- really much. stepping yeah. up. So uh, that happened a couple of weeks ago. A people leader has seen his team blossom where. Other team members are giving feedback, sharing information, keeping people up to date, stepping in when someone wasn't quite sure of how to do things, which we would say, yeah, that's how teams operate. However, he did see another level of ownership Mm -hmm. on the work and what, um, yeah, what the team was doing. So we really invite you to have a conversation around psychological safety. And it just could be at a team meeting to have a discussion what do you think about psychological safety yeah, or what would it what what would it mean for you to feel safe in this team environment mm. and you just start capturing those ideas and that just see where that takes you yeah great or put this podcast on <laughs> <to a> meeting <laughs> and or, have a discussion yeah or put it. the ted talk on so there's yeah. a number of things that you could do mm, yeah. great okay have a psychologically safe day then. <laughs> okay We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the People Leaders Podcast. For show notes and other resources, please visit us at peopleleaderspodcast.com. While you're there, you can subscribe for future episodes so you can continue your own leadership journey. And please be sure to share this and other episodes with your friends and colleagues. The People Leaders Podcast is brought to you by the Experts On Air Podcast Network.